Hello there, my name is Josh Hall. Um, I'm going to be going through in this video to show you how to take a low poly count and a high poly count bit of geometry um, and producing bump maps and normal maps that will allow you to put the low poly count mesh into Unity 3D but with the effect of it looking like the high poly count mesh. So this mesh I've reconstructed using Photoscan and I'll show you the pipeline that I'm using to get it into um, into Unity 3D as a much lower poly count um, model. So this is actually a thousand faces, but it looks it looks um, fairly similar to the 400,000 face original image original model that I'm using. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, this is what I'm starting off with. I'm using PhotoScan to do 3D reconstruction. I've taken about 200 images of this tunnel and um, I want to put it into a Unity 3D um, project so that I can have people walking around it and I can share it with people. So I think this is a, let me find the section that I was using. This one. As you can see, these each section is very high um, poly count. This is nearly 600,000 faces. And um, what I've done is one single reconstruction with these 200 images, and then separated them out, cut them out, so that the uh, resulting texture projection will also be high resolution. So there's there are very very large um, poly count models for something that you want to run in Unity 3D and um, this is a 4K by 4K texture image so it's still maintaining a lot of detail. Um, let's see if I can find one that I was running through, I think it was this one. So this about 400,000 faces. If I export this model As, a, as the high poly wall model and I've already applied the texture so I can export the texture JPEG with it Oops. again it's finished uh, and then I would go to tools decimate the mesh bring it down to about a thousand so here it is, you can see that there's a lot fewer polys in this setup. I'll just turn off the cameras. And one thing that I can show you, sorry, if I go and export this one as well, low poly, we do not need to export um, the texture. We don't need to project the texture for the lower poly version. Um, we can just export it as is. One thing that I'll show you, just to reload it to show you the high resolution, the high poly count model of this section, is that you can see the sections of the bricks. You can see a lot of detail in it. So you can nearly make up individual brick surface. And um, you can see these parts where there's damage to the bricks, there's holes. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, there you can pretty much see the levels of bricks and damage to the ceiling and things like that, little holes. That we want to show up um, eventually on our final version. Another good reason for using bump maps and normal maps is that if we had a low poly version of this and then we tried to apply the texture then areas where there is indentations and holes where it's significantly different from the um, from the low poly which would be um, pretty much just a flat surface those areas the texture projection would start to go all fuzzy you get distortion in those areas because the surface it's trying to project onto is not exactly where it should be so that's another good reason for um, for going through this process. 
So now we've exported the high and low poly count uh, meshes and also the high poly count projected texture. We can go into 3ds Max and import. Let's see if I can find. Import the high poly object. And it also in this point, in 3ds Max, we don't need to load the texture, we just need to load the um, geometry itself. So there's, um, in the version, the final version that I'm using of this model, I've cut out this section of the floor that looks a little bit weird. Um, that's okay for the moment. It might it might do some slightly weird things just because it's um, it's quite irregular, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, now if we import the low poly version, and it's important that they're both in the same space. They take up the same space. So if I select the high poly version, just ah, okay. So for doing this process, I'm using a tool called XNormal, uh, which you can download for free from this website, xnormal.net, through downloads. Um, I think it only works for Windows, so it's important to have Windows. This is a version that I'm using. So once you've installed that, you have an option for the export. I'm just going to go Export Selected, and this is the high poly version that I'm exporting. Um, I might call it High 2 actually. And we hit the High Definition Meth Mesh button, and I'll just select those elements. And that's exported. And now I'll select the second mesh, the low poly. Go through the same process. Export, export selected. I'll call this one low two. And um, just make sure when you're doing this export that you have the X normal. This is the option that comes with installing X normal. So you have that as a added exporter. And low definition mesh. I don't need the export cage. So that's fine, I can just leave that. And that's exported OK. Now I can close um, 3ds Max and open up XNormal. So if you have other things set up already here, you can clear them. I want to go into High Definition Meshes, right click and say Add Meshes, and then select that. Um, where is this? High definition mesh that I've just exported, and I also want to add the um, add base texture to bake. So this is the high poly count um, exported projected texture that came with the um, export from PhotoScan out. So there we go. We have our high definition mesh and the high poly count projected texture. Now in the low definition mesh we don't need a texture, we just need to select the low definition mesh that we've exported and um, we can come into baking options. For the moment I'm just doing very small so it doesn't take too long to, um, to produce. Uh, these settings uh, just what I've seen in another tutorial that work well. So anti-aliasing is good to have high. Just have default bucket renderer set up, and uh, it's important to have these set up. You can um, just go and call it test two, and um, you can select whatever size you want your final textures to be. In the demo that I showed at the beginning of this video, I was doing 4K 4096 by 4096, and I want to export the height, the normal map. Um, and it's important when you're using 3ds Max to make sure that Y is negative, and the height map has an interactive mode that I'll show you in a second, and bake to textures. Now before you hit the Generate Maps button, just go to Tools 
and hit ray distance calculator what this will do is create a cage around the low resolution mesh that it will use to work out the difference it will know how far to look for the high resolution mesh so if we hit go um, has no textual coordinates assigned please export them um, okay so it is apparently necessary that I have my texture exported um, I suppose because I need to um, I will need to apply a texture to the low resolution um, mesh so I'll just go through and do that right now it's not super important I suppose what the UVs applied to the low resolution mesh are but I suppose it's important to have them alright so I'll just go through that process again decimate mesh and now I'll build texture make it a lot smaller uh, what is it? Five. Well, actually, I'll. Uh, is it nine six? This might take a moment to process. And uh, while that's happening, I'll just go back into 3ds Max to um, to re-export this mesh. Okay, so here is our applied texture for the low poly, the about a thousand face poly. Just go to export, low poly wall. I'm exporting them as an OBJ. And yes, and I want to export the texture as well. Actually, the texture itself isn't important. Um, it's just important that that model has UV maps, has a UV map on it. So if I close that now, I will new, open new empty scene, and um, can be fairly sure that the new model is in the same space, coordinate space. I'll just make sure I'll load them both again. So here's the high poly one. and the new low poly okay yep so they are in the same space just make sure that the low poly is selected and I'll go to export export selected and um, overwrite I remember to set X normal Overwrite the old low. By definition. Okay. Great, so I can close 3ds Max. We'll go back in here and just clear it and add it again. And let's go through this process again. So the amount of time that you run this process for um, affects how big the cage is. And apparently in some circumstances, uh, having the cage too big will create overlaps which leave artifacts in your, um, in your maps. 
For the moment I'm just doing it for 10 seconds, we'll see how that goes. You just um, Now that it's run, I've stopped it at 10 seconds and I'll just hit copy results and now close. Now we should be ready for generating the maps.